السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. والله يفيد ذا فايب ما شاء الله هني. It seems that it's the beginning, it's not the closing session. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. If you will allow me, I would like to start by something, you know, very little story uh, about what I was uh, going through today. Uh, when I was driving to uh, attend this session with you yesterday, uh, yesterday, I have attended, and I would like to uh, give you my feedback uh, about the interaction happened with uh, the chairman. I felt one main strong feeling that you guys are extremely lucky to be part of the decision making. And today I was having the same thought again and again. 10, 15 years ago, when we were at your situation, your position, we did not have this interaction with the leadership. We were not part of the decision making. We were not engaged to the level that you are engaged right now. And this segue is not just being lucky. It does show how the leadership here in the government of the UAE is admiring your contribution and having the great trust in our youth in how they will be able to impact and transform the future. Because you are the future. You are the future leaders that you will have the accountability to move on in building this nation and other nations, pushing towards the prosperity, alhamdulillah, that we are having right now and inshallah for years to come. There is a high level of expectation from you guys. So I'm very lucky to be uh, with you here today and I'm very happy to see you part of the decision making process. If you just go outside this conference room, you have all the government entities all the private sectors, the pioneer in the sustainability uh, arena now, starting from policy making, regulations, innovations, R&D. Guys, you have the chance to engage and interact with them. This is by itself giving us another expectation from you that when you will, inshallah, in a few years will be in our positions, you will have much stronger push towards the future and much accountable community changing the behavior of the culture, of the organization that you will work with, the family that you live with. You guys will have an impact and we trust it will be the better, inshallah, for years to come. So uh, always remember that we are being blessed and this country with a great leadership that giving all of us these kind of opportunities. And I'm very happy to be with you again uh, today. We'll take a pause and we'll take you a little bit to the history. When the modern civilization as we know it today has been powered by the use of the energy. And that was a clear when the industrial revolution start to gear up and to move. Everyone was using the energy to have that kind of development and progress. And guess what happened? A rapid change when the energy started to, to take the act, a rapid change and a marvelous development happened for the human life changing the way of life, changing the tools and the infrastructure that we have around us. So all the communities were booming at that time. But there was always one cost to it. Do you know the answer? What was the cost of having that rapid development? Global warming. 
So from there, from a development arena to a prosperity, a development, a civilization, we always remember the cost. And the cost is still until now had the impact. And it's our talk of the day today, what we have to do and what we can do to make it happen. So impacts of the climate change are becoming more and more visible as the communities and the civilizations took a place. And always there was the pressure on the energy sector everywhere, always they will pinpoint and will finger at the energy sector to minimize the use. And calling for sweeping, swift, sustainable alternatives for the use of the energy. Here you are, the future generation, the future leaders. What do you think? Can we stop using the fossil fuel? Yes or no? No. Do we really have the intention to go back to the old days, to the stone arena and say, you know, we will go back to the jungle? Is that something that we can accommodate? Mashallah, I'm sure everyone has a smartphone here. Right? OK. Can you imagine by using your smartphone for 28 minutes on the social media, 28 minutes only, that's equivalent of 166 meters of drive by car, I mean small car. Is that something you know, clicks if you will use your mobile phone, your smartphone for 28 minutes. The energy that you have used is not only your charged smartphone, but all the cabling to connect you with the world, that required energy. So think about outside your boundary. Your use here is an energy being spent and used somewhere else. So to put that kind of balance, you can do the multipliers. What does that mean? That means we are accountable for any act that we have. Can we stop using the smartphones? Can we stop using the social media? No, the social media is great tools for conducting and there is great benefits from it that we, if we use it for the best interest of humanity. My friends, I'm here to give you some problem statements and I would like to have some interactions from you, please. I don't want to throw a blame on this generation on the sequences of the past energy model and usage. And we cannot do that because you know we will be self-beating forever and with no progress. But it is our challenge as a policy makers, it is again our challenge to deploy a cleaner, more reliable, more efficient policy to ensure that we will keep the best use of the efficient manner of the energy. The energy transition we are leading and our net zero initiatives will not only improve our environment, but it will create future and new jobs for generations to come. I would like to take you in, in a journey of eight years from now, there will be up to 24 million jobs created of this energy transition around the world. 24 million jobs. 
How many people are looking for jobs here? <laughs> Imagine in eight years' time, how that will reflect our community, how that will reflect our impact on the planet. So imagine environmental engineering, industrial engineering, a new engineering process, R&Ds, uh, transportation will be all smarter and energy efficient solutions. That's a pathway to move on in our future. So the accountability on the policy makers to ensure that we will always set the policies to reduce the emissions and the impact and enhance the efficiency. That's the role of, from government's perspective, that's the role of the governments uh, in, uh, in all nations. But there is another side. The problem of the current you know, it's, uh, it's not only the current, but it was the past, and it will be the future if we will not solve it. It will become and remain a problem. And that is the abuse of the energy, not the use of the energy. If we will abuse the energy, means that we are not wise when we use the energy. We are not cautious about our behavior and our utilization. The energy is fundamental in the modern life. And every time you travel, every time you commute, every time you use your phone, every time you use your car, every time you use your kitchen, what act you will have? Imagine all, almost all acts, all manufacturers, our clothes, our phones, with the respect, our shoes, Imagine everything we have, everything we do, and for the ladies who love shopping, bags, everything, it being consuming a lot of energy. So we, we need to be cautious on the impact. Do we need to cause a positive or negative impact on the environment? And how can I spend wisely? How can I use energy wisely? That's the question that we will remain asking ourselves. So we count on you gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, that reducing your electricity usage is good, but it will never be enough. Because there are more indirect ways, as mentioned. So almost anything we use, anything we consume, involves a use of energy. That's something I want you very much to remember as a takeaway from here. Sustainability is a state of mind. And we count on you to be the real change makers in the community and on behavior on the way of life. We need you to stand strong, and we need your contribution. We need your influence on your peers, on your family members, friends, and to be wise energy consumers. You can be sustainable by pursuing your degree in a clean energy. You can be sustainable in starting up your business. You can be pioneer in sustainability if you will come up with a new, new unicorn idea. First of its a kind. There are many ways that you can think of how sustainable you can be. So I believe that people will expect always the same result if they will keep doing the same thing. If you will not change your process, no way you will have an improvement. So you always have to think, not only outside the box, but think smarter. Work hard. Work hard is good, but work smarter is better.
and try to find how you can make your sustainable thinking in the culture of any organization, any projects, any uh, academic degree that you want to start with. Uh, in 1999, maybe I'll give a personal uh, story here. I was at the university, and I have decided to go with environmental engineering. And uh, many people at that time, they were not convinced. And personally, for me, it was because we love our environment. And uh, Allah Rahman Sheikh Zaid was the man of environment. Uh, not only locally, but internationally at that time. So studying environmental at that time was not something you know common or people are familiar with, but I decided to be out of my comfort zone and to do what I feel I have the passion for. From there, I have joined the oil and gas, and I have my first uh, the project was to do an environmental impact assessment for the largest gas uh, plant called Habshan, you know, along with the, you know, the experts that we have. And I was, uh, you know, a newcomer. And I was super amazed how an environmental engineering can change and reduce and reuse the resources that we have. Not only saving money, we did save money, but we did save the environment. And that's something where I felt I start to achieve things and I start to pay back to my country. And then I joined the energy efficiency projects in, in the oil and gas as well. In 2008, before the inception of the UAE nuclear civil program, I have joined the team, and I was, yeah, I mean, I was blessed and lucky, alhamdulillah. I was uh, one of the founders uh, of the UAE nuclear program. And I cannot really express how much of learning I have brought from the university, from the oil and gas, to this program. The nuclear was different, it was tough. But there is always one side, which is the environmental side, where you have to ensure this energy that you will have will always be clean. So I, I want to take you back to your own calls and decisions. Any decision that you will take now, trust me, it will impact your self positively, inshallah, your career, your community, your country, and then you will find that globally impacting positively and you will ensure that the environment is not within the borders of the UAE. The environment is for the whole planet. So, ladies and gentlemen, before I close for questions, I would like to give you some insights on the way forward. It will never be easy you have to stand strong. You have to sail to the true north. You have to believe in what you are doing. You have to get the passion. If you do not, don't have the passion in your path, stop, find your true north, find your passion, and then move forward. Otherwise, it will never be a journey of accomplishment. You are at the optimum phase of your life, You're extremely lucky to have this opportunity in the UAE that you have no barriers between you and the decision makers. You can, your voice, your views will be heard and you will have the feedback on how things will evolve and the guidance will always be provided. I'm extremely proud of our young Emirati youth, as well as the international um, uh, youth, and how you guys are interacting through those circles, and you are making this sustainable gathering, and this is where things will be brought 
on the topic. We are not here to show you cases of achievement. You all know the achievements that we had in the UAE. And if you don't have it, just leave this meeting room and you will see the exhibition. You will see how many projects that the UAE have achieved, even through the pandemic. Why? Because the true north was always there. People, they did not stop. Even through the pandemic, major achievements were achieved. True north is there. The passion has to be from your inner courage to make it happen. By this, I would like to thank you, and I'm available for uh, any questions you have.